Hi, welcome to Rescue TV with our friend Dr. John Demartini. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. It feels like every time we have you on the rescue couch, there's a very specific message that I need to hear. And then we publish the interview and it seems like your specific message was for everyone at the right time. <laughs> so today we'd love to share, uh, ask you to share your wisdom with us about a particular topic that's of interest to a lot of women. And that is how to say no without fear and without embarrassment? Well, that's a great question because that is something that many people get trapped by. They end up doing things, particularly during the holidays, they get trapped doing things, saying yes to so many people, and then they end up scattering themselves, feeling overwhelmed, and feeling like they're doing lower priority things instead of doing what's really important to them. <clears throat> so if you don't say no to things on the outside, um, you um, end up having to say no to the things on the inside. Is there a particular reason that you think as a Western society um, we're trained or, or women in general are trained to say yes more than no? I do believe that. I think we want to be polite. We want to be liked. We don't want to be rejected. So we end up getting trapped. You know, everybody has a set of priorities, a set of values that they live their life by. And whenever they're doing things that are highest on their value, they're inspired, uh, they're productive, their self-worth goes up, they're creative. There's a lot of benefits being true to yourself and living what's, what's meaningful. But anytime you inject expectations and opinions and demands from other people in there, sometimes those are lower down the list and you devalue yourself and you scatter yourself. And then you don't get things done that really make you feel important and feel like you're accomplishing things. So you have to say no. So the key is the artist learning how to say no is thinking in advance of what is the benefit to them, the person you're saying no to. How does it help them? Oh. Not just you, but how does it help them? What we found is when you're able to say no, they may have immediate reaction, but then they respect you and value you more. So you win in the long run by learning how to be authentic, yes. integral, be true to yourself. And so as an art in saying, uh, thank you, but no thank you. Right now I've got a lot of priorities on my plate and I don't want to book something or do something that I can't be my best at. And I'd be distracted and I wouldn't be 100% with you and I don't think you deserve anything but the 100%. You say it in a way where they win out of it, but at the same time you're being true to yourself. In terms of, um, one of the things I've noticed when I haven't said no, uh, is that immediate physical feeling that you have. Are there any other kind of cues that you can look to to learn from of when you know that you've agreed to or said yes to something that's not aligned with your values? Well, you immediately start feeling uh, unclear. You immediately feel a knot in your stomach because you know, oh my yeah. God, I just, I knew it and I just didn't say it. I don't really want to do that, but I didn't speak up. Having integrity, and having integral answers and honesty to them in the long run clears the consciousness. And as I said, there's more respect, there's no appreciation, and you end up having this almost dis distracting energy when you're with them doing the things because you're not really present, because you're present with things that are really important to you. So it's wiser to just say no. That's really caring. You care enough about them to say no so they can get around with people who really want to be there. To their, with their functions. I've got a couple of examples that I'd love <clears throat> you to give us a little bit of a script around. Um, let's start with saying no to our children because uh, that seems to be something that's a common day-to-day -day thing. So maybe a good place to start is saying no to our kids. <clears throat> well, I believe that there's, when it comes to the children, I believe it they deserve to have a reason. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate reason. But if you say they'd like to go out and let's say play and do something, and you say, right now, you have other accountabilities and responsibilities that haven't been done. So when they're done, you can consider that. When you're done, call me, let me know, and then we'll consider playing because it's wise to not let immediate gratification stop you from your responsibilities in life. Give them a reason for it and say, no is really caring. If I said yes to everything you wanted to do, you'd end up growing up with throwing tantrums and throwing emotions and everything else. You grow up and I, I care about you and I don't want you to end up growing up using getting what you want all the time and throwing tantrums and being emotional all the time because you're not stable and you're not going to be respectful that way. Give them the reasons why. They'll, they're more intelligent than most people realize, even at young ages. Give them the reasons why. That way they deserve that. Because if you don't give them the reason why you say no, then they feel it's an autocrat and they defend against it and want to create a revolution against that. But if you give them the reasons why, even though they may not want to hear them at the time, in the long run they'll respect it and they'll remember that and they'll use it in their own life. Now parents seem to press a lot of buttons and parents, uh, particularly as you get older, um, 
you have this kind of sense of social obligation or as they're getting older uh, you feel responsible for them saying no to parents particularly as they uh, are getting elderly seems to be one of the things that people have trouble saying no to can you give any advice around that it's interesting i just dealt with that yesterday with people in the seminar um, i believe that parents um, if they have respect for their their children if they have a hidden agenda that they're expecting you to take care of them later in, and that if they have financial problems, you're supposed to rescue them. I believe that the parents have the responsibility to let you know that in advance before you take on and be helped by them when they're younger. So you can make a decision at that time whether or not that's how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's unfair to have a hidden agenda and then use guilt trips. So I think that if they don't, if they just expect it from you, I think sitting down with them very objectively and saying, mom and dad, you're capable of still working, you're still capable of producing, um, I'm not going to rescue you. This is what you would tell me in this scenario when I was younger. And uh, so how do we work this out? How, how are you gonna be accountable and responsible? Because if I rescue you, I will up presenting you and then I, we will undermine our relationship because that's not the best way to run this thing. Now, if they're invalids and they truly can't able to do things, then you might have to work as a team in the family to try to help the, the parents. But if they're capable and they're just not doing it and they're wanting you to rescue them and make it easy on their life because I did this for you and they're using guilt trips. If you listen to guilt trips and run your life by guilt trips, you're probably gonna end up beating yourself up and be angry at them and end up not doing some of your own dreams. And what about in a <clears throat> situation where you're saying no, less to supporting them financially, but more to their constant or um, involvement either in your personal life or in the lives of your children? Well, again, it's like any other time. If you don't say no, you're out of integrity and you're holding inside of emotion and it ends up blowing up sooner or later. Anytime you repress your emotions and are not integral, that you might repress them for a period of time, but they're going to explode. So it's wiser to do it a little at a time and just be integral with people than it is to have it explode and then talk behind their back and this kind of thing. So it'd be wiser to tell the, pa the parents and say, uh, Mom, I know you want me to come over there. I understand that you like to use guilt trips in order to try to get me there, but that doesn't work with me. Uh, if you'd like to give me a reason for being there in my own values where I feel like I'm winning, I'll probably be there. Uh, but uh, just using guilt trips because of that and projecting expectations into me is not the most masterful way of communicating. I dare I, you to try that on an ethnic set of parents. <laughs> well, if, if, if you don't, you're yeah. gonna, they're going to throw guilt trips. You're going to end up resenting it. You're going to end up gossiping about them behind your back. You're going to sit there and not going to be fulfilled. And they're going to be sitting there and bitching. So my advice is be integral. I, I've, I've helped people do that. And at first they get a reaction, but once they see that you're clear, there's a law that states that anything, any area of your life you don't empower, somebody's gonna overpower you. So if you don't empower yourself to be able to say no and don't empower yourself to be integral and believe that what you have is priority and important, you're gonna end up people trying to grab your time and push you around and do things until you stand firm. The moment you're integral, then the people back off and they start respecting your time. So let's talk about a situation that perhaps you have a little bit less control of, and that's in the work environment. Uh, have you got any scripts or suggestions for how to say no in a business or work environment, whether it be with a client or a boss, um, to create some boundaries that are respectful, but still within the realms of okay? Um, yeah, because many times the boss is not aware of all the things on your plate. They're projecting expectations that are demands coming into them. And so the wisest thing to do is to sit there and make a list of everything that's on your plate. And if oh, for yeah, some reason they're, 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 you're overwhelmed, you sit there and you say, I have 41 things that are on the <laughs> list. I'm gonna ask you to help me prioritize these because otherwise I'm guessing. So I have my own ideas. I think these need to be done, but you may have something that you expect to be done at a certain urgent way. He's really good. <laughs> so you, you prioritize that list and have them prioritize it and said, I don't believe this is possible to get these things all done. I think that's unrealistic. You can see the list. So tell me what's priority and I'll stick to priority and I'll do what I best I can to try to help you fulfill it. But know that there may be some other things that you're not able to do. Unless you're willing to, I think I can produce more for the company if you let me have an assistant to get all these things done. Because if we don't get them done, we're, hold, we're holding back business. If, I, if you'd allow me to have an assistant that I can delegate lower priority things to, I can keep doing the highest priority things and we both produce more for the company. I love that. And for clients? Well, if a client is putting an unrealistic expectation on them, you have to face that and say, and let them know this is an unrealistic expectation. That's why it's wise to qualify your clients. Every time you've ever had a challenge from a client, make a list of it and make sure that you let the client know what a successful client does and doesn't do. I like that. So you have a qualifier in the front. Because if you, I used to tell my patients, Mrs. Jones, there's definitely, I, I know I can help you, 
but before I accept you as a patient, there are certain quality that quality clients, or uh, certain qualities that quality clients and successful patients have, and they get the best results. I'm assuming you want the best results. Yes. Then you're going to want to file the same thing. If uh, I schedule you for an appointment, you need to be here. Uh-huh. If you're if you're late, uh, you need to make it up. These kind of things. So you let them know in advance. So you give you them uh, give them an opportunity to become a great client, and then when they do, reward them and thank them for what they do that that is online, instead of having to punish them when they don't. I love it. As always, practical and very, very easy to apply in your everyday life. Thank you so much. Thank you.